Oh, uh, this is Nimzing. Uh, I'm just having to uh, come alive, uh, sorry, come live and onto the social media platform to talk about something very dear to me and which uh, has been very emotional. Uh, looking at the recent events that uh, have happened uh, to me in terms of a diagnosis, a positive uh, COVID-19 status. Now, this is uh, not something that uh, should surprise people because globally there is a pandemic ongoing. And so uh, it is not a surprise that uh, one should be uh, diagnosed. But when it comes to the fact that you seem to have a front line and or some kind of knowledge that should keep you away from such diagnosis and then you become a victim, that can be very, very uh, distraught and unhappy experience, particularly for those who look up to me. Uh, obviously, I didn't disappoint myself, neither did I disappoint anyone. Uh, this is really something that could happen to anyone. And uh, the experience that I'm going to share is basically about what uh, went well, and uh, which would actually help people, because I think uh, people are in a clamor of what should they do, should they be diagnosed. One of the big, big and bitter problem that I find, uh, and or a gap in the care for patients and for people around this time is the emotional support that is lacking. Uh, I think that um, uh, the, 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 the people who are looking after our health should think twice and also governments should go beyond the disease and the pandemic and uh, put some humane approach to this condition. Uh, I do not seem to have ready answers, but uh, as a victim, uh, what was what what did I do? What should be done? Who should act and how should they act? So when I got diagnosed with uh, COVID-19, it was surprising because I had the vaccine uh, about three days earlier. Uh, but again, do not be in a hurry to say that the vaccine caused a diagnosis for me or I became a victim to COVID-19 because I was vaccinated because I know science better than that. What really happened was that I may have been exposed to COVID-19 uh, virus uh, before I had the vaccine because the incubation period takes about a minimum of 10 days. So very likely that although I was well enough and I had the vaccine, uh, I was in, in the incubation period and so the disease manifested thereafter. And it was basically like uh, a kind of uh, malaria fever, some kind of feeling of... Um, uh, kind of a stinging kind of feeling in my joints and uh, some kind of um, mild headache and tiredness and stuff like that. And so I thought the vaccine was uh, having a toll on me and I was getting too tired and I wondered why that was the case because I thought you should have uh, some symptoms of the vaccine for a few days and then you would go into um, developing some other problems uh, or get better or something like that. Then I realized that um, a week on and I was still having symptoms. So I wondered what was happening. So it was a real bother to me. And then I thought about it and uh, my colleague said, go and do a test. And of course, it came back positive. And uh, so I was told, go home and isolate. Of course, I had to be with my family. I had to go into a room, I had to stay there. They gave me food by bringing it to the door and uh, they left it and I would take it and eat and then they would come and take the plates. And sometimes when they're all, all gone to sleep, I'll come out and do household chores for myself and take my showers and stuff like that. That was how I went through that. But the big challenge, uh, which is the gap in care, I realize for those who are self-isolating, is the emotional torture. Of course, as a doctor, there is an anticipation and or sometimes colleagues will call and find out how you're doing. Uh, but for a lay person, I don't know what people do when they are self-isolating because one, I knew some pathogenetic changes. And so the worry in my mind were one, what would happen next, okay? Is if, for example, I begin to have uh, difficulty in breathing, would I recognize it? What, was, what, was, what should I be doing? Uh, and and so on and so forth. So occasionally, I would, if I find a little bit of strength, I would jump and uh, feel, uh, take some deep breaths in and out, and keep my breath up, and just be checking to be sure that my breath was actually still intact. Uh, I will try and call a few people, 
uh, that is because I can call, but some others can't call. So I could call and talk with people. And of course, from the other end of the phone, they will tell me whether they, I was sounding well or I wasn't sounding well. And they prayed with me and they kept encouraging me. So many people came with so many ideas of what I should take and what I should not take. Of course, you do know as uh, when you become sick, you lose your idea to think about uh, what should be done. Your science goes away and so on. And so at that point, uh, I do remember some uh, professor who was ever sick. And then uh, instead of thinking about what to do, of course, the professor lost all the ideas uh, he had and had to be taken to uh, a traditional herbalist for cure. And what, whatever happened, of course, you know, the story is not good. But for me, I knew the science. I knew the things to do, but I had no idea what I should be doing. Of course, I checked my breath, like I said, to be sure it was still intact. I called people, I had chats. Uh, I was hacking some cough around my throat sometimes, and I was just trying my best to see that it was not getting worse. Uh, I had a bit of uh, salt and warm water and gargle and cleared my throat at some points, which did help me, really. Uh, and um, and loved ones called me and told me what I should do, what I should not do, and so on and so forth. I did not take any of those azithro marks and stuff like that. All I knew was that I have always been an advocate for people to be on vitamin D and, 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 and some kind of multivitamin, which is very good. And this I have been taking even before COVID-19 came on board. And so, and I also believe that uh, the reason why there is a, a kind of a low death rate from COVID-19 in, in Africans who are staying in Africa is because they're exposed to good vitamin D sources, which is the sunlight. And so vitamin D supplementation was an important thing I've always been taking, which actually may have actually mulled some of the experiences I had. And so the, uh, ex the symptoms I had did not last very long. But the mental torture of what is going to happen next, what is, what, what is the pending doom that is going to happen? Who is going to, uh, am I going to die? Am I going to develop complications? What is going to so many things were running through my mind and, and these things uh, weren't easy at all uh, uh, of course we don't and then there's this concept of cytokine storm where when the fever stops then suddenly some cytokines will just rise in your system and you then start decompensating and people have been had those kind of scenarios and, and that was the real challenge that was my bother and I thought about okay family and thought about okay my groups so many of you loved ones that I've been interacting with well, am, am I going to leave them and I remember at the beginning of the pandemic I did speak with so many of you and I did talk about the condition the COVID-19 how we hand started and so on and so forth and I mentioned are we going to die and so on and so forth and so it, it was playing on my mind of course, it took about just about five days or so, and then I started gaining my strength. I went on back to life again, returned to, to work and um, started feeling fine. And, 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 and that's it. What did I take? I didn't take any antibiotics. I took paracetamol, yes, and I took uh, ibuprofen when I needed to. But my energy came back quite good. I felt strong when I returned to work. Now, but what was the reason? Why is the likelihood that I felt strong? I think that uh, retrospectively, I overworked myself, did not have enough sleep and was uh, doing lots of work, sometimes working uh, six days in a week uh, and uh, more than nine to five and uh, was always doing some kind of uh, web designing, e-learning platforms uh, and uh, trying to solve people's problem, uh, virtual consultations so many things and and that was not easy for anyone but i realized that that period when i was locked to stay in one place helped me so take some rest do a bit of exercise keep a healthy life so what lessons have i learned maybe about five i would remember if i can remember to tell you for the things you should be doing the five things that people should be doing that can be of help during this pandemic i would say one uh, think about um uh, social distancing so that you don't get exposed to somebody else's virus to uh, cover your mouth and uh, or thereafter and make sure that you do not if you're getting to be too close to somebody just cover yourself and stay away from their troubles uh, three uh, if 
you are at middle age, ensure that you are on some kind of multivitamin, some kind of uh, some some minerals or vitamin D or stuff like that that will be a perpetual lifestyle because you will not eat that. Get this all in foods. A lot of our foods are refined. Uh, uh, for ensure you live a healthy lifestyle, engage in exercise, physical activity that will keep you healthy. And uh, five, the vaccine. Of course, many of you, some of you may have reservations about the vaccine, but I tell you that the vaccine has a significant role and it's going to be a very, very important role player at this time. Clearly, you can see that even in Europe, there's a clamor for vaccine. There's a fight about the vaccine. If it were not working, that would not be. I tell you that the vaccine is working. We already see numbers are declining in hospitals. Uh, and a lot because a lot of the people that were exposed uh, have been vaccinated. And so the current uh, pandemic may soon be over if people take off the vaccine. The big challenge would be how much of it is going to be available. Those who are denying it already are doing favors to countries that are receiving it. So think twice before you start fighting the vaccine. Thank you very much for listening to me. I will appreciate you subscribing or follow me uh, and you can get updates of this nature. I run platforms on e-learning, I run platforms on hepatitis B, I run platforms, so many things that I do. Uh, I am the director of Worthy Works uh, Limited, which does a lot of health education to people. Uh, follow me and you will be uh, happy that you did. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.